In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, I welcome each and every one of you back to our public celebration of Mass. And I welcome those who are still watching us from home, that we are still a community of faith who will persevere in these difficult times, especially as we come to celebrate the great solemnity of Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit will once again renew us and the face of the earth. So as we gather, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let 
us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant, we pray, that the splendor of your glory may shine forth upon us, and that, by the bright rays of the Holy Spirit, the light of your life may confirm the hearts of those born again by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly, there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh Lord my God, you are great indeed. How many fold are your works, O oh Lord? The earth is full of your creatures. If you take away their breath, they die, and they return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit of life, they are created in your sight. May his glory last for all time. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him will be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of Saint Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. 
To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Spirit, Lord divine, come from heights of heaven and shine. Come with blessed radiance bright. Come, O Father of the poor. Come, whose treasured gifts endure. Come, our hearts unfailing light of consolers, wisest, best, and our soul's most welcome guest. Sweet refreshment, sweet repose, in our labor rest most sweet, pleasant coolness in the heat, consolation in our woe, light most blessed shine with grace in our heart's most secret place, fill your faithful through and through. Left without your presence here, life itself would disappear. Nothing thrives apart from you. Cleanse our soiled hearts of sin, arid souls refresh within. Wounded lives to health restore, bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide the wayward home once more on the faithful who are true. And profess their faith in you, in your sevenfold gift descend. Give us virtue's sure reward, give us your salvation, Lord, give us joys that never.
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Like many of you, last night I was glued to the television watching what was happening in our dear city. It was late at night, and I thought, I'm going to have to do a new homily. But then I thought, no, stick with what you have. Let's see how this progresses, hopefully safer. And then, after I've prayed about it, I'm sure you will get a homily on all that's been happening with that. But this weekend, I want to focus on Pentecost. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. When the doors were locked, for fear of the Jews, I remember when we had to lock our doors some 11 weeks ago. It was quite painful. It was difficult to do so. There were so many unknowns and so many opinions, so many different people and different media outlets telling us what we should do. Then came the feelings of isolation and anxiety and fear, uncertainty, doubt, anger, worry. You name it, we felt it. Then there came the thoughts of, will we survive? Will we have enough food or soap or toilet paper? The basic essentials to go around. Will I have my job? Will I keep my job? How am I going to be able to pay for this or that? When the doors were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. Our doors were locked. But not because of fear of someone or a religious group. They were locked because we were afraid of the unknown. We were afraid of a virus, a pandemic. Too many people getting sick, too many people dying. And so we did what we thought was best and right and fair and just with what we knew. What we were told to do. Now, some people might not have agreed with that decision, and that's their opinion. Some people might not have thought that we should have locked the doors at all, and that's their opinion. And some people even think that we should not be open today. Again, that's their opinion. People have been locking the doors of places for centuries, especially when they are afraid. A locked door can give us a sense of peace and security but it can also give us those feelings of isolation and loneliness and fear. We want to get out, or we want to get in. 
We want to break down the door for freedom and peace and serenity or on the other side. And through it all, Jesus was and still is in our midst. At this parish, we tried our best to bring Christ to you through our various reflections and prayers and the celebration of the Mass. Through our emails and phone calls and check-ins, we did what we could, we did what we thought was best to make sure that you and your loved ones were connected to this great parish of ours. That you were okay. And I'm proud to say that even though the doors of the church were locked, the ministry and the service of the church were alive and still open for business. We never stopped ministering, we never stopped teaching, and we certainly never stopped learning. So I'd like to share with you what had happened, at least liturgically, since our doors has been locked. They were locked during Lent, and it was truly a Lenten experience. We were forced to go into the desert, a place of isolation and contemplation. We were quarantined. We were locked in. We were locked out. It was a totally different experience than we were used to. It is a Lent that we will never forget. It was truly a desert experience. And then came Palm Sunday and Holy Week. My favorite time of the year, and I suspect many of you look forward to that as well. We did our best, we made it work, but something was missing. You. You were the ones missing from the holiest week of the year. But there were some good things that occurred as a result of COVID-19. Holy Thursday, one of my favorites. It was weird not having people here, but I was elated when it hit me that I would not have to wash or touch or kiss anyone's feet. I hate feet. But it's humbling. And I can wait another year. Now, Good Friday was difficult. I am always amazed at how many people show up in the afternoon to pray the Stations of the Cross with us. The evening service was beautiful, too. I'm always moved with deep and profound emotion when I see you come before the Holy Cross of Christ and adore it the best way that you can. Some of you kiss the cross while some of you reverently touch it or grasp it. Some of you bow while some of you drop to your knees as the pain and the agony is on your face. And sometimes I've even seen people weep. The tears trickling down your cheeks because you feel and know the pain of suffering. You know what Jesus did for us. You know what he endured because you have carried your crosses too. I must admit, though, the Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday was very nice. It was peaceful. It was simple. You know, that Mass has a lot of moving parts to it, and it can be quite hectic and distracting and long. But the darkness and the simplicity was very nice. And I know Deacon Denny loved it too because he didn't have to carry this tall and heavy paschal candle all over the church. So you got to get fit and toned for next year. On Easter Sunday, we were used to a packed church. Beautiful flowers, beautiful people dressed in their Sunday best. Some of them we haven't seen in a while. It's just so good when we can all be together again but not this year. Now at this point I was getting depressed. I was tired of looking at an empty church and a camera that does in fact add 10 pounds. I wanted to be with you, I needed to be with you. I needed to be with the people of God. But then a few weeks later I had a wonderful surprise birthday parade and my lonely and empty heart was full again because I got to see you. I got to speak to you. And we were able to be a community again. For 50 days now, we have been celebrating the season of Easter. Alleluia's have been on our tongue, and we are reminded why Christ had to suffer and die and why he had to rise on the last day. For 50 days, we've been pulling out all the stops, providing good and beautiful and sacred liturgies, and we used a lot of incense. 
If anything good has come from this pandemic, it has been that we have been able to use incense at Mass and no one coughed. No one got up and left. No one complained. I kept waiting to hear a cough all the way at the Circle K. But it never happened. Because no one was here. And so here we are today. The doors are no longer locked, except from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. Let's be clear. Our doors are open. Masses are being celebrated publicly once again. The word of God is being listened to once again, and the Eucharist is finally being received. We did it the right way. We didn't reinvent the wheel. We didn't try and be cute or do anything bizarre or clever or irreverent. We just did without for a while. And that's okay, because absence makes the heart grow fond. Today may be the first day in almost 11 weeks since you have received the body of Christ. I hope and pray that he touches your soul and heart like never before. I hope our Lord fills you with so much joy and excitement and passion that you cannot wait to come back to Mass again that you cannot wait to share the good news of Christ with other people who may not care, who may not know Him, who may not believe. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Do not be afraid. For we have received the Holy Spirit. He has always been with us. Christ has always been in our midst, especially when our doors were locked. We have no idea what the next few weeks or months or even years will look like, and that's okay. Let's just focus on today. Why waste so much precious time worrying about tomorrow? Let's worry about one day at a time. Let's use common sense, and let's remind ourselves that we are a people of faith, hope, and love. It is so good to see you back to see your mask-covered faces. It is so good to be able to give you the body of Christ once again. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your love. My dear parishioners and guests, welcome home. Let us stand together with one voice and profess our one faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, a light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Transformed by the Holy Spirit, we pray now for the needs of the church and of the whole world. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, May God help them bear fruit according to their own gifts given by the Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may the Holy Spirit give them discerning hearts to know his will and the courage to follow it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us gathered here, 
May the outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit sanctify and transform us for the good of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, especially Doug and Susan Miller, who are celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary this weekend, may their commitment to each other be blessed and strengthened through their commitment to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our loved ones who have died, may they rejoice forever in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all clergy and religious of our archdiocese, especially Father Shane, who is celebrating his fifth anniversary of ordination to the priesthood this weekend. May they be blessed in their life of consecration to the Lord and his church. And may their example be an encouragement for young people to consider a church vocation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Cindy Rapp Goldsmith, whom we remember at this holy mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear the prayers we bring before you and answer them according to your will, for we make them always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Pour out upon these gifts the blessing of your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you have made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth and profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of it, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Raphael, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, Dear servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
This time you may be seated. I do believe, since this is the fifth weekend of the month, we will have the second collection for our St. Vincent de Paul. Our ushers will be coming around during the purification of the vessels. Thank you for your generosity. Let us pray. O God, 
who bestow the heavenly gifts upon your church. Safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for spending your Saturday evening with us. Welcome back uh, to each and every one of you. We do hope to see more of you. Uh, spread the word. I tell people who are nervous about coming back to Mass to at least try through a, a daily Mass at noon uh, to see how things go, and it tends to uh, kind of ease uh, the anxiety as well. So thank you for being here, following the guidelines, and worshiping so beautiful uh, with us as well. Have a blessed and a safe weekend. The and Lord I have be with just you. one announcement. Oh, yes, you may. Oh. <laughs> as you heard in the petitions, today Father Shane is celebrating his fifth anniversary of being ordained to the priesthood and what a blessing you have been father so with your permission and with yours i would like to offer a prayer of blessing for father shane god our father we praise you for the great mercy you have shown by sending priests to shepherd us to preach your holy word to bring us new life in christ to nourish forgive heal and strengthen us through the sacraments of your church. We thank you for the gift of Father Shane's priesthood and for all we have received through Father Shane's generous, self-giving service. O oh God, how good and generous you are for pouring out so many blessings on your people through the priesthood of Father Shane. We ask you to continue to bless him as he ministers to us each day. Make us more and more grateful for the precious gift of your priest, whose open hearts and open hands bring us the gift of your Jesus, your Son. May they generously be a light that inspires us to say yes to your call to love and to serve according to the plan you have for our lives. And we make this prayer to you in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this week, Father Gary celebrated his 45th. And I said, this parish has 50 years of priestly ministry between the two of us. If I make, I'll be dead by the time I make it to 45 years of priesthood. Uh, but please pray for me and for Father Gary and all priests uh, as these weeks lead up to their ordinations. It certainly is a joy and a privilege to serve as your pastor. So thank you uh, for your support. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Do, do.